The migrant crisis in Britain has resulted in Rishi Sunak to come up with the most insane solution to cut the backlog. And in this video, we're going to explain why the Prime Minister's policy is crazy. Now, we either have, on a regular basis, uh, the Prime Minister coming out to declare victory on the migrant crisis, even though nothing is changing, or we have another policy idea. So things get introduced on a regular basis. It's been going on for the past few years. Nothing actually changes. And uh, Downing Street, over the last few months, it decided to centralize the whole problem. So they've taken more responsibility than the Home Office and Suella Brabman. So Suella Brabman has not actually been attacked anymore because Rishi Sunak has decided, like an idiot, <laughs> to take control of the narrative without having any solution. So he's getting destroyed in the opinion polls and now he's got a new idea but it's not just him by the way this is also the bureaucrats in the home office so I'm not going to fully blame the prime minister but the prime minister is the main decision maker he's the most senior minister so technically he is responsible for any policy that any government department come up with he has to give the green light at the end and approve the plans so they have decided <laughs> they have decided to to reduce the interview process they cut it down the length from seven hours to 45 minutes from seven hours to 45 minutes now i personally am thinking about of a couple of questions one why was it seven hours before two it was seven hours and you still couldn't vet people's backgrounds three if the seven hours was necessary do you really think you can achieve what you are achieving or failing to achieve with just 45 minutes? Four, how is this going to help anybody? Five, <laughs> you're just going to end up having bureaucrats in the home office doing quick interviews without actually vetting anybody. So the approval rating is probably going to go higher than before. Unless you guys have some sort of master plan that you're going to use this as a loophole to reject people's asylum cases. Hmm. Or oh, maybe you guys are the smart ones. Yeah, in the home office and Downing Street. So the, none of it makes sense. Why it was so long? Well, bureaucracy, everything always takes long. But how they could cut it from 7 hours to 45 minutes? And how is this going to actually make things more efficient? If you couldn't vet people's background within 7 hours before. Now, concerns are growing that a rapid increase in the number of migrants being released from hotels because they're going to cut down the interviews will actually overwhelm local councils, local authorities, which have already warned the government that they lack the capacity to house them. Some councils are considering using public buildings such as leisure centers to house illegal migrants leaving the home office accommodation. Others are warning of a crisis in the system. Hang on, you were warning of a crisis in the system. We are literally at the end game right now. The country is falling apart and you guys have just discovered, oh, we might face a bit of a problem with housing. So we don't want the migrants to be in hotels with taxpayers' money, but letting them go out by cutting down the, uh, the, the length of the interviews, so you're going to basically approve all of them. <laughs> Where are they going to stay? This is not sustainable. Why is nobody having an outrage about this in the media right now? Even the mainstream channels who are relatively new, like Talk TV or GB News, we, we do hear rants every now and then, but there has to be a proper investigation. Get the Prime Minister to go on the channel, live interview, ask them like a, like a court session. You need to actually prosecute these people in a very layman terms, obviously, to actually find out why they're not doing anything. We need actual evidence from the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary. Give us documents saying why you are failing and whose fault it is. If you have a list of um, civil servants, let us know. If you have Macron with evidence that he's doing something on purpose, let us know. If you are just incompetent, let us know. If you are actually complicit, then you're not going to tell us. Well, somebody else needs to find out. Because it's time to change the system. It's not working. It doesn't matter if it's Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer in charge. The same problem will continue. Because deep down in the system, the whole thing is rotten. So... One source from the government said that they're responsible for homelessness within a large council. They've said, we already have a deficit on accommodation places and we are now set to have hundreds more people needing somewhere to go. The authority is close to declaring an emergency. Again, you're just cl getting close to declaring an emergency. The emergency should have been called about five years ago anyway, if not before. But over the last four years, definitely. Second issue is, 
we still on this channel are regularly reporting what's going on with British people, British homeless people, British families who have jobs and they're still in the waiting list for some sort of accommodation, some sort of temporary housing. And you guys have abandoned all of them. But because of international law obligations, you are completely accommodating the illegal migrants, whether their case is genuine as asylum seekers or not. That is irrelevant at this point because we're talking about the numbers. We have already talked about the issue with mass migration, but right now I'm talking about the numbers. You don't have the capacity. The, your local councils are about to declare emergency. I don't know why they took so long. And you don't know what you're doing. And you keep introducing new barges and military sites. How many people can you actually hold there? A couple of hundred people. That's not going to solve anything. Now, Sean Davis, who's a councillor and chairman of the local government association, told uh, Times Radio that local councils had a proud history of supporting humanitarian efforts and protecting and supporting refugees. However, Sean says, combined pressures from these many schemes are growing on councils and there continues to be a crisis across the refugee and asylum system. We need a joint up approach and um, across a central and local government to the cumulative uh, pressures on local services from all asylum and resettlement uh, programs. This needs to include urgent solutions to our uh, pressing housing needs in the short and the long term across all the schemes that welcome new arrivals to the UK. Stop welcoming new arrivals to the UK. That should be the policy. Now, there was a short period of time between mid 20th century and late 20th century or early 21st century where Western places like the United Kingdom became the prosperous places properly. We called it the first world. And then the rest of the world that underdeveloping or obviously not developing countries, the third world. The whole point was it created a bit of a gap and that gap created self guilt in the West. A lot of people said we can now be generous because we are prosperous. Let's be welcoming. Let's be generous and help uh, people in the third world. Now you can't say third world anymore because it's politically incorrect. But mass migration created multiculturalism and with a lot of bad central government policies over the last few decades from all the parties, countries like the United Kingdom and France and Germany, we are no longer that so-called prosperous country that you had in the 20th century, that short period of time. We are actually having social and cultural issues that comes from the so-called third world. We have economic issues and high taxes. The people's pockets cost of living crisis is as bad as the Middle East. And people in the Arab world have more money right now than us in their pockets in Qatar, in UAE, even in Saudi Arabia, in the stable dictatorships. So economically, we're worse off. Socially and culturally, we're divided. And things are getting worse. And the political left and the establishment still believe we are so prosperous and stable that we can be generous and so welcoming. Everybody should be able to come here because we have the capacity and we are so civilized. Have you seen the chaos? Thanks to mass migration and multiculturalism, the poison that's destroying British identity. Have you seen the government policies and economic policies and taxation and everything else destroying small businesses? Local, local authorities, local councils, everything bringing down the community spirits, family values down, everything about civil liberties are in danger. And now we have to be so tolerant and so thankful to our overlords. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.